Welcome to Electron Line. To gain better understanding of how photons transfer their energy, either in part or all of it, via the various mechanisms to the electrons of the atoms, or through to pair production, due to pair production, let's take a look and see how that compares when photons interact with carbon atoms versus when photons interact with lead atoms. Notice again, the red line here represents that this is the photoelectric effect where all of the energy is transferred to the electrons to move them to higher energy levels or to ionize the electrons or ionize the atoms by removing the electrons. The green line represents the Compton scattering effect where the energy is partially transferred to the electrons by scattering the electrons in one direction and the photons in the other direction. And finally, the purple lines represent pair production where all the energy is taken to produce a pair of particles that happens, of course, at very high energies. But when you look at the two boxes here and the two sets of curves, you see that there's some significant difference between them. On the vertical axis, we have what we call probability, the probability of that event occurring. Notice that as the energy of the photon increases, the probability of having a photon electric effect decreases, while the probability of having a Compton scattering effect increases. The horizontal line represents the energy contained within the photon, anywhere from point, well here would be 0 0.01, I guess I can call this 0 0.01 on this end, 0 0.01 MeVs, that would be 10 kilovolts, uh, 10 kilo electron volts, 100 kilo electron volts, a, a million electron volts, 10 million, and so forth. Well, that 0 0.01 again. But then notice the difference. Let's take it one at a time. Here you can see that the photoelectric effect sharply decreases with increasing energies when by the time we get to 100 kilo electron volts there's no such thing in carbon atoms as the photoelectric effect but with lead atoms well past the 1 MeV will you still have events such as photoelectric effects that of course has to do with the fact that lead atoms have a much larger nucleus therefore it holds on to the electrons much tighter with much greater force and you need much more ionization energy to set the electrons free and have them jump to the upper levels, include especially the ones that are close to the nucleus. Lead has an atomic number of 82. There's 82 electrons to be set free, and the ones that are very close to the nucleus take an enormous amount of energy. With carbon atoms having only six protons at the center, it does not take nearly as much energy to ionize electrons, so the photoelectric effect tends to stop at much lower energies for carbon relative to lead which means that once electrons are set free and so we have a cloud of electrons in an area where carbon has been bombarded by photons of the energies of 100 keVs, you then can have a lot of the Compton scattering effects because we have lots of electrons that have been set free from the atoms and can move in one direction versus the photon in the other direction. And then finally when we get to the pair production, you can see that with heavier nuclei, Pair production occurs at greater probability at lower energy levels with large nuclei versus smaller nuclei. The large nuclei provide much more of an interaction mass for the photons so that they can be accelerated at greater accelerations, therefore causing much more of a pair production event than for smaller atoms such as carbon. So it does seem like lead acts more like a brick wall, so to speak, to the photons, causing them to more likely um, turn into a pair production event than for the smaller carbon atoms who don't have as much mass and are not as able to affect the photons in a way to cause them to do pair production. You can see that there's a vast difference between carbon and lead and I'm assuming that as you get to large and larger atoms that the charts will look from here will turn more into looking like that. But it's important to understand that that does happen so that you don't assume that when you have a lead atom that the photoelectric effect stops at 100 kilo electron volts that it just continues with high probabilities until much higher photon energies are found. So by knowing that, you can understand the interaction between photons and matter much better in the future as we get more into the details of quantum mechanics. That's how it's done.